All right, so here is a puzzle that was sent to me by Nash Rathbone. If you like tools and tool restorations and uh, vintage cameras, then check his channel out. I'll put a link to his channel in the description box below. And uh, yeah, he kindly sent me this puzzle and I sent him something in return as well. And uh, yeah, let's open this up. Oh, wait, before I do, I've also got another package as well. These are some dexterity games that you can hear. Uh, which I bought off eBay. So let's open up this one first. Alright, so here it is. So I think you could class this as one of those 3D jigsaw kinds of puzzles, and I think I only have one other one, which is like a, a clear plastic egg. So it says there, let's zoom in actually. So it says the Snafu's Puzzle 1, Make a Cube. I think Nash was given this. I think he was given two of these at work or something, at the place that he works, I think. So you've got Innovation, Curiosity, Customer Focus, Drive, Success, Decision Makers. Snafu's Puzzle 2, now try returning the pieces to the puzzle. Ah, right, now I'm noticing for the first time all of these things, I thought you'd just be able to like pop them out and then put them back in in any order. I didn't actually notice that they're actually there's no spaces between them. Um, they're actually interlocking with each other. So putting them back into this card will actually be a puzzle as well. I didn't know that. So let's see if there's anything on the back. There's nothing on the back. So yeah, let's pop these out. So this is like a. Uh, it's like a foam material, like a hard foam. So yeah, this is really unique in that not only is it a puzzle to actually put these together into a cube, like a 3D jigsaw puzzle, um, but it's also a puzzle to put them back into the card. There is the card itself now that I've taken all the pieces out. And here are the pieces. So yeah, they just kind of lock together like that. Obviously that's not correct because I'm not going to be able to properly make a cube since this bit is kind of going down going down further than the bottom of this bit, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Well, that's kind of correct. I mean, obviously not correct because it's upside down, but it is fitting together with uh, this piece properly. There, you can see that they're both level with each other. So I will try to make a cube with uh, with this later on, and if I can do it, then I'll make another video showing me solving this. So that is really really cool. Um, and a big thanks to Nash Rathbone for kindly sending me this. So inside this, I have some dexterity games. So it's extremely rare that I'll go into eBay or onto anywhere online looking for uh, puzzles to buy or dexterity games to buy. Not because I've lost interest in them. Um, I still very much like them, but just because you know I've got more than I could ever want now. But recently I was looking on eBay to see if there was any of those uh, Lewis Congost dexterity games because they're quite unique as far as dexterity games go. Um, I made a video of me solving one not that long ago, it was a, a crane one. I saw a few on eBay for sale and um, when I was looking through the listings I stumbled across these. So these are more like your kind of regular dexterity games, you know, they've got ball bearings in them but they're not actually cube shaped. Let's open this up. So yeah, these look these looks really interesting to me. There's like four of them all together. I've I think I've already got one of them. Whoops. And the price was really good as well. It was an auction and it was starting at something like £3.50. And I think the postage was £1.50, so that's like 
that's like about five pounds altogether you know i thought well that's a really good price and i've got a feeling no one will bid on them so i made a bid on them and i won them all right so i'm gonna to have to edit out a lot of me opening up this package because while i was opening it up i had it this way around in this flap it was up against this i didn't notice that it's got my postal code on it and the number of my house and the writing is so big i don't think i'll be able to blur it out so i've uh, put the flap down so it can't be seen so yeah i did actually go upstairs before to check what the total was that i paid for this and including the postage the total was something like six pound five p and so there's four dexterity games here so that works out at about one pound fifty one for each dexterity game which i think is an absolute bargain and the person has packaged this really well Okay, so here we do have a cube shaped one, which is the shape of most uh, ball bearing dexterity games. And I'm pretty sure I've already got this one. The only difference is that the colours are different. Yep, I do indeed have the same one as this. But actually, they are are a bit different because the ball bearings in this one are a lot bigger than the ball bearings in this one but as you can see we've got four tubes and we've got four tubes on the bottom as well with this like floor uh, separating them and you've got a hole there and there so obviously the goal of these is to get a ball bearing in each of these tubes i'm guessing there are eight ball bearings in each cube since there's eight tubes so i was thinking that i will probably sell this one on ebay since i've got the same one you know i'd, I'd rather sell this one than this one because this one it's like it's part of a set and i wouldn't want to have one missing from the set but since the ball bearings in this one are bigger and heavier than the ball bearings in this one it could affect the difficulty of uh, solving this compared to this one I think the, the bigger, heavier ball bearings are going to probably move around more slowly than the smaller, lighter ones. And so that could make it easier to solve. Whereas with this one, I find it really difficult to solve. I think I can only get one or two ball bearings into one or two tubes, and that's it. So we'll put that there, and we'll open up this. So these ones are not cube-shaped, and they're just look really interesting to me so these do kind of look vintage so there's that one and that one and that one. So on the backs of these is a description. And on this one it says, how fast can you get all six balls in the enclosures at the same time? And so you can see they've got arrows pointing at the balls, um, either in the enclosures or outside of the enclosures. And it says D there. So I'm guessing, so these are like a set. I'm not sure if there was any more or not you've got d there a there so i'm guessing there was a, a b and a c this one it's got a number on it number three instead of a letter and then on this one it's got another description there object is to pass the ball from one side of the puzzle through the sliding maze to the other side in the fastest possible time so as you can see we've got like walls there with gaps in them for the ball to pass through but then you've got these blue things in the way which slide about so these blue things will kind of block the ball from
from going through. And obviously you've got to get the ball from one side of the puzzle to the other. Sorry about the glare there. Okay, I'm going to edit this into the video because there's something that I didn't notice before. These don't just get in the way of the ball. The ball can actually go inside them. In fact, the ball is inside one of these now. Um, let's see, you might be able to see you've got there's like a, a hole there in each of these blue things. So the ball can go inside it and then there should be a hole on the other side. Yep, you can see one there, like a square hole. And it's like that with all of them, so the ball can actually pass through the, through these, and obviously not that easily. Um, and yeah, you're going to have to, so you've got gaps in these walls, and you're going to have to line up the, uh, the gaps in these blue things with the gaps in the walls, so the ball can pass through. As you can see, I'm looking at this one, can see now I've lined up both the uh, the gaps there. so yeah I forgot to talk about what's going on with this one so as you can see obviously like like it showed you on the back you've got to get the balls into these like loops and you've got gaps in the loops for the balls to pass through and obviously to get the balls onto the side you've got to pass them through like another wall with a gap in it and you've got one there and it's like covered as well the top of it let's try and get a ball bearing to pass through so I've got one to pass through there but now because this is covered you can't see where the ball bearing is going so that's going to make it maybe a little bit more difficult to get it through the gap I mean just then it was actually really easy so maybe it won't really make any difference at all and now that ball bearing is stuck there uh, and then we've got this last one so you've got all these all these rings one ball bearing you've got like a maze there and a maze there so this can either be a start position or a finish position and this can either be a start position or a finish position so yeah so you've got like your maze there um, it, I mean this part of the maze it kind of seems pretty pointless because you can just get when if you start in there all you need to do is to get your ball out of that bit and then it just needs to go all the way up to there to enter into this bit so it's kind of like what's the point in all this bit uh, it's kind of kind of like a maze or something so yeah it's going to be quite difficult I guess getting the ball to pass through this middle section and through this hole because you've got all these loops in the way and let's take a look at the back of this now that's interesting on the back on here you've got one of the one of the maze walls it's like really low down and so it's actually going to block the ball from going all the way across so you'd have to kind of make it go up there and and around but it's not actually like that so like this bit you can see it's not going all the way down to the wall there like it is on that so that's kind of strange you can see a giant arrow going that way the ultimate challenge how fast can you move the ball from the bottom corner square through the center ring zone into the upper circle or vice versa made in Hong Kong I'm guessing they were all made in Hong Kong yep see so yeah, how these kind of seem like they are vintage not really sure how old they are not really sure which year they are from but there you go so yeah today I unboxed these dexterity games and a 3d jigsaw cube puzzle from Nash Rothbone thanks for watching